Hello, everyone. This is Tom from VoIP Supply, and I'm joined by Todd Milbrand from Sangoma uh, for the Sangoma webinar today. If you could please uh, utilize the Q&A feature for any questions you may have, uh, you will find that in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. And that uh, will pop up. You can put your question in there, and we will address all questions at the end of the webinar. And so uh, if you don't know already, some of the benefits you have of being a reseller right here through VoIP Supply, our VoIP rental program, hardware and provisioning, our cloud span marketplace where you have uh, access to all the providers that we are partnered with directly. We can sign you up as a uh, agent to collect uh, uh, discounts and monthly residuals on any contracts that you would close. We also have our fulfillment services, uh, which kind of couples right there with hardware and provisioning where we can uh, get you into our on-site API and make a nice fluid uh, system for you so you can get stuff drop shipped out to your customers quickly and easily, all being provisioned and even uh, white labeled to your specifications if need be. We also have our refresh and reclaim program which can help you save money and get money. Uh, so by buying our refresh product, you're gonna save a bunch of money on a stock uh, refurbished product, uh, really good prices, comes with a full year warranty right through VoIP supply. And we also have our reclaim side of things. So if you have a customer that you're doing a new install on and they have old Sangoma product maybe that we need to uh, turn in, maybe get some cash for, we can always send you a quote for that uh, gear and get you cash back on that. And at the end, as I said before, we have our Q&A feature where we will address all questions. Lower right-hand corner, there's the Q with the little bubble, and you can utilize that for any questions you may have. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Todd from Sangoma. There's all our contact information right there. Should you uh, need to contact us directly, we can uh, address any questions, any quotes you might need, and uh, set up a conference call and uh, help you out in whatever way you need. And with that, I'm going to send it over to Todd. Awesome. Thanks, Tom. Um, so we've got a couple of items on the agenda for today. Um, we're going to start by uh, reviewing promotions. Uh, most of them are around cloud, and I'll show you guys how to access those in the new partner portal. We'll then do a quick review on what's new in Switchbox Cloud, uh, and then we're also going to review Fax Station and then SIP Station as well. Uh, so I'm going to get started by actually going into the new partner program. Uh, or partner portal, my apologies. So you go to sangoma.com and under partners here, you can choose to log into the partner portal. Uh, if you're not a uh, partner, make sure you choose to become a partner and get signed up with us. Once it pops up here, it looks like I'm already logged in uh, to my partner portal. Um, there's a tour once you log in. Uh, we did a, a webinar on the new partner, partner portal, show you different items. And if you come down here to current promotions, or if you go to marketing, you can access all of them. And you can see the different campaigns that uh, we have for uh, what is calendar year Q3. Uh, so for example, uh, if you have any Switchbox deals you're working on, um, you can get 10% off of uh, Sangoma D-Series phones um, anytime you purchase a subscription license with them. Uh, that's only available through silver and gold partners. Um, if you're up against an AllWorks system, uh, bring us a copy of the uh, AllWorks quote and you can get a 10% uh, discount on that. We have an on-premise to cloud promotion. So this is for customers that uh, currently have a uh, switch box uh, on-prem system and they wanna look at uh, going to cloud. Uh, it's a way for you to take a customer that maybe uh, is ready to make that switch. You know, they bought a, a 
premise-based system from you five years ago, 10 years ago. Um, so we got uh, three months free on that. We have a three months free on SipStation promotion. Uh, so if your uh, customer happens to purchase Switchbox uh, and sign up for a three-year contract with uh, SipStation, uh, you, the customer will then get three months free. Um, we have five times MRR uh, for any of our agents on Switchbox Cloud, SipStation, and FactStation. Uh, so that means if you sell $100 worth of those cloud services, you're going to get a spiff of $500, plus uh, your normal monthly uh, commission uh, check that you're also going to get uh, as part of that uh, from VoIP Supply. Uh, we also have a nonprofit rebate um, that uh, can get you an additional 5%. And we also have a government education rebate. And we have a free D60 with Switchbox Cloud uh, as well. And if you want to find out more about any of these, um, you can log into the partner program, partner portal. Sorry, I keep calling it program. Uh, click on details uh, and find out more. Or you can also reach out to your rep here at Sangoma or your rep at uh, Point Supply to get additional information on any of these. So going back to the slides, we're going to discuss now what's uh, new in Switchbox Cloud. Um, we're currently on version 7.3.1 with Cloud. Um, part of the uh, update includes emergency dialing notifications. So this is where uh, when someone in your organization uh, dials 911, uh, an email can be sent uh, letting you know that uh, 911 was dialed, uh, what time it was dialed, uh, what extension it was, uh, music on hold. Uh, previously with both uh, conference bridges and the parking lot, uh, your only option for music on hold uh, was to use whatever the system default was. Uh, we have now upgraded that where you can choose music on hold specifically for conference bridges and uh, for uh, uh, the parking lots as well. Uh, we've also got easy call pickup. Uh, so this is where when somebody's calling uh, someone else uh, within your organization, you can very easily pick up that phone call. Uh, and since these slides will get sent out, I included uh, the link to all of the new features. Since uh, we don't have time to go over every single one, and you'll be able to go through those in a little greater detail. You know, the easy call pickup is uh, down here. Uh, you can get a custom ringtone. Uh, you can do long press to answer it. And with the D80, which is our touchscreen phone, uh, you get an activity card where you can very easily uh, just press on the touchscreen to uh, pick that call up. So with that being said, let's move over to FactStation. Uh, on the agenda for this portion is going to be uh, reviewing what your options are with Facts and some of our competitors. Um, very broad competitor, not you know, not anyone specific. We'll talk about the service architecture, uh, the pricing. Uh, we'll talk about the uh, portal. Uh, and then the Q&A is actually going to be at the end. My apologies. It's not going to be at the end of uh, the fax station piece. Once we're done with fax station, we'll go over SIP station. So the first option for actually doing fax is uh, the longest standing one that uh, has been around, which is uh, doing it with analog lines. Um, everyone's familiar with this. Everyone's probably used it. Uh, problem with analog lines is uh, they're expensive. Right, um, AT&T, Verizon, they don't want to spend any money uh, putting any investment into their network. They, they are mandated uh, by the federal government to maintain that network, uh, but they do as little as possible uh, and they keep increasing the price up for folks because they want the government to tell them you do not have to maintain it anymore. They want to go all IP. So, it's great, works 100% of the time as long as you're in an area that um, 
doesn't have issues with uh, copper foam lines when it rains, things of that nature. But again, the expense, you know, 50 to 100 bucks per line, and that usually doesn't even include uh, any pages. You've got to pay on top of that. So a lot of folks look at it and go, you know what? Why don't why don't I do this with SIP trunks? Everything you know, everything else is SIP trunks. Um, and the issue you run into there uh, is you typically need to put a gateway in to connect to the fax machine, and that gateway is then going to go out over the internet. And that gateway is going to require real-time digital to analog conversion, uh, which can be problematic. Uh, but the bigger issue is uh, dropped packets or any jitter going over the public internet. So while we are talking on this conference call, there are packets dropping constantly. And your brain uh, doesn't notice it, right? Your brain uh, actually uh, does notice it. It just puts everything together. So you don't hear the parts of my voice or Tom's voice or anything else going on that are dropping. Fax machines are not as smart as our brains, obviously. Uh, they're also very, very finicky. Um, so when you have a dropped packet um, and that weird fax tone you're used to, that you've heard before when you've accidentally picked up one of those calls, uh, when a packet gets dropped, it can cause the entire uh, fax to uh, actually die. So a lot of people go, you know what? I'm going to use the cable company. You know, people, folks like my parents actually uh, think their their service from Spectrum is, is the same as what they were getting from Verizon or AT&T. Uh, they don't realize it's actually going over the internet, coming over the cable modem. Uh, the big issue here is you're still going to have a, a digital to analog conversion uh, when you plug that combined unit they give you of cable modem with uh, some analog lines up to the fax machine. Uh, at the end of the day, it's still a SIP trunk. So everything we just talked about still applies. Um, and then in my experience, the worst part is um, it's a crapshoot with the technicians they send out as to how much they understand uh, not only internet, but then telephony as well, right? Uh, you can get a guy that, uh, or a gal that knows it all and can help troubleshoot. Uh, or on the flip side, uh, you can get someone that comes out there and just goes, hey, your signal's good. Uh, and there's obviously a lot more to it than uh, just the signaling. Um, so what about a fax server? A lot of people think that may fix things, uh, but you're still going to have issues with uh, everything else. Right, because you're still going to require either a SIP trunk coming into it or a T1 or analog lines. Uh, it gives you um, a lot of flexibility, right? You don't have to necessarily go up to the fax machine and um, put things in. You can do stuff from your desktop. You've got storage. Uh, but as far as actually sending and receiving those faxes and doing so in a manner that uh, guarantees uh, it'll work. Um, everything we just covered is still going to be uh, a problem there for you. So a lot of people then go, you know what? Well, why don't I do eFax, right? Covers all of that. And uh, it's going to give me the ability to um, do everything from my desktop or uh, from a computer. So a couple of problems with uh, eFax. Uh, big one is that you can't connect a fax machine, right? So most offices, uh, you know, have everyone from young interns to uh, people that are in your retirement age. Um, I'll let you guys guess, but some of those folks are going to prefer doing it from a computer uh, and would be scared to try to send a fax using a fax machine. And I'll let you guess which folks may feel a lot more comfortable with the fax machine and uh, would have a deer in headlights look trying to learn how to send the fax from their desktop. Uh, and then the other big thing is, is it's typically a per user charge. Uh, so, you know, you have more than a couple of users, it, it can get pretty expensive pretty quickly. 
So how do we solve that? We solve that with uh, our fax station product. Um, our fax station product can be either or and a fax machine or e-fax. Um, no per user charges, as you'll see. Um, it works in low bandwidth situations. So we actually developed the solution so that people could send faxes uh, over satellite internet in the middle of the ocean, specifically for the oil industry. I, I still don't understand, you know, from 10, 12 years ago, why guys on oil platforms needed to send and receive faxes, but they did, and that's how we ended up developing this. Um, and it gives you one throat to choke, right? So you don't have um, the cable company, uh, if they're providing you internet, blaming the SIP provider, and SIP providers blaming it on the fax machine or the fax machine on the other end. Uh, this gives you one throat to choke uh, when you have any type of issues. So the way this works is we actually put an appliance on site if you have a fax machine, and that appliance will tell the fax machine it's connected to it's another fax machine, whether it's incoming or outgoing. So if I were to send a fax to Tom over at Voip Supply, it'd come over to my fax machine, load it up, put in his number, and when it dials, it'll go to the appliance. The appliance will say, yes, I am Tom's fax machine. Send me all of your pages. Once all of those pages are loaded on the fax station appliance, it's gonna securely get transferred over to our data center so again, bandwidth doesn't matter here because uh, it's going to treat it like any other type of data. It no longer becomes real time. Once it's fully in our data center, we will then send it out over the PSTN. We actually pay extra to send it out over the PSTN uh, to the receiving fax machine or e-fax or whatever it is. And then the same works in reverse. Um, Tom sends me a fax, it's gonna go this way through this uh, slide here. You transfer it over to my appliance. Once it's fully here, it will then dial my fax machine and fully get sent over and there for me to pick it up. Um, I can avoid this part over here on the left, so the appliance and the fax machine. And I can go right into the um, web portal for this, the data center. Uh, to send and receive my faxes uh, without ever having to touch this. So I don't have to get the appliance. If I don't have a fax machine, we can treat it uh, just like uh, an e-fax service. Uh, but if I do get a fax machine, I still have the ability to do that. So little uh, FAQ on how we price this. Um, so if you do want to get a contract, you do need to have what we refer to as a high volume trunk. So that's 3,000 pages. And you do need at least one DID, which is a phone number. Um, and then the way we price it is we don't care how many users you have. We care about the number of pages. So if uh, you're the type of customer where you still have the fax machine or you, your customer has a fax machine because uh, one or two of your important customers send large POs every month, um, and you only need 150 pages because you're not even going to touch that. We don't have a contract available there, uh, but it's only $9.95 per month plus the dollar for the phone number. And you can 99% of the time bring over your existing phone number to the service. Uh, now, if you're doing more than that, uh, we do have month to month, one year and three year contracts. Um, and if you're doing more than 3000 pages, then, uh, we're just going to add an additional one. If you have one fax machine, but you're doing 4,000 pages uh, and you want to do a three-year contract, we're just going to get two of these three-year contracts, bundle them together, 40 bucks. It'll give you 6,000 pages, a little more than you need, but you don't have to worry about ever going over 100% uh, reliability. and um, definitely less expensive than what you're looking at uh, with uh, most other solutions. So e-fax, you don't have a fax machine. Again, we do not care how many users you have. So in this particular example, 
Um, a thousand users can share 150 pages. Um, either you or the admin at the uh, end user, that's kind of going to be a nightmare to send up a thousand users. Uh, but you can do it. We don't care. You just can't go over 150 pages a month. If you need to do 300 pages a month, you cannot stack that low volume trunk together. Uh, you would have to go with a, a single high volume trunk. Uh, and then in the second example here, two users can share 15,000 pages. And again, since all we care about is the page amount, uh, you're just going to stack five of those together. Uh, and if it's on a contract, it's roughly for 15,000 pages, about 100 bucks there, uh, plus whatever uh, DIDs you may have. Now, what if you add a fax machine into the scenario or a couple fax machines. Um, well, each one of those appliances I was talking about has four ports. Um, so if you have one fax machine, you got to get that appliance with four ports. If you have five, you've got to get two of those appliances. We don't have an appliance with more than four, uh, but they can be stacked up together on the same account. If you have let's say three fax machines, um, each port it's plugged into needs service attached to it, right? So what I'm saying there is you cannot buy or subscribe to the high volume fax of 3000 pages and then plug three machines into it. Each one has to have service attached to it on that box. Um, so uh, you could, uh, just get uh, three of the high volume faxes, attach it to each account, or I'm sorry, to each device. And then in that scenario, we do not care where the uh, faxing comes from, right? So if you have three fax machines and you have the ability to do 9,000 pages, we don't care if one device does 899 and one of the other devices does one and the third does zero, um, you paid for 9,000 pages, you get that. Now with three devices, if you get the high volume uh, faxing trunk with 3,000 pages for one device and you get low volume for two, those two cannot go over 150. It does not stack together. Uh, it does not roll up to where you have 330 now. Um, you're putting the low volume on those two because they only do the occasional number of uh, faxes. And if any of this uh, gets a little wonky in your head, which I totally get, uh, it certainly was for me uh, back in the day when I first started selling this, uh, reach out to me, Tom, uh, your uh, uh, account rep of wipe supply and we can uh, very easily guide you through this and uh, you'll get the hang of it. All right, so now at this point, we're going to review SIP station. We're going to do an overview just like we did. Uh, we're going to talk about how it's priced, what makes it different, um, what's unique about the architecture there, and then we're going to do a Q&A. So with SIPstation, um, I did, did mention uh, if you were an agent with us, you can get five times MRR. Uh, to get started, uh, all you need is one trunk, and each trunk gives you 3,000 minutes, uh, and those minutes stack together, right? So five trunks will get you 15,000 minutes, um, and each trunk gives you uh, a bi-directional call path. Um, so using an example of 10 trunks, you can make 10 outbound phone calls, or you can do five inbound and five outbound or 10 inbound. Um, you're limited to 10 in there, right? And you need at least one DID, so one phone number, uh, so we know where to send everything to. Um, so similar to what we saw with high volume faxing on fixed state fax station, uh, we can do month to month, one year contracts, three year contracts, and that five times MRR, that's for the three year contract. 
um, every phone number you bring to us, a dollar um, or that you want to sign up for, it's going to be a dollar per month. Um, if a customer has an 800 number or they want to sign up for an 800 number, it's 150 per month plus 2.4 cents per minute. Um, and one thing to keep in mind with the 800 number is if we go back to the example of 10 trunks, and let's say they get 10 trunks and an 800 number, any calls to that 800 number do not apply to the capacity of those 10 trunks. So you can have 40 people calling in on that 800 number and still, uh, depending on usage, if no, one, if no other calls are going on other than 800 number calls, um, those 10 trunks would be open. Since you pay per minute in that situation, um, it leaves the capacity for the trunks you've selected uh, completely open and also um, minute usage. So for example, um, using 10 again, you would have 30,000 minutes. Any calls to the 800 number don't uh, uh, apply there. Um, you do get SMS texting uh, that is, I think, coming here. Actually, it is here with Switchbox as well. It's not just PB Exact and free PBX. Uh, it's one cent per minute inbound and outbound. Um, T38 faxing. So we just did a whole thing on fax station, how it works 100%. I think I talked about not doing it with SIP trunks and T38. With that being said, I always tell people, um, especially if, if, if fax is not important. So let's say you only do a couple faxes per month. In the scenario I used with fax station, it was, hey, I'm getting big POs. I wouldn't even chance it. Just go with fax station, uh, pay the 9.95. Now, if you're like, look, we occasionally get uh, faxes, but they're not important to the business. Honestly, we wish they would stop. We can care less. Try with T38 faxing, especially with SIP station. Um, we do a lot to um, normalize the fax, um, which uh, allows uh, for sending and receiving to uh, work as close to 100% as uh, you can get with SIP trunks. Um, so what makes us different um, than, say, Joe's SIP service uh, that you can Google up and look at? A couple of things. We just talked about T38 faxing. Uh, we do ha that same dedicated data center we use for fax station is where SIP station faxing goes through. Um, we have something called trunk groups, right? So you've got multiple locations. Your customer has multiple locations. Uh, they're busy at different times of the day. Um, using that 10 trunk scenario we just laid out, um, why make them get seven trunks at each location to have the ability to reach their maximum call volume uh, when you can just get 10 and share them across. So it brings down the price uh, and also makes customers a lot uh, happier. We have tons of failover options uh, right out of the substation portal. You can do it based on uh, per DID. Um, so right now, I believe in our system, if uh, something catastrophic happened, and, uh, we have it set up so any phone calls to my DID fail over to my cell phone. Um, you can do it based on IP address. So you can say, hey, if I can't deliver a phone call to this PBX at this IP address, I'm going to fail over here. So it allows you to do fail over to different hardware, um, assuming in that situation it's either internet down or that uh, something has uh, died physically on your server. Uh, so it gives you some uh, geo redundancy there. Or you can do a global failover. So um, instead of sending it to a different IP address, just send, if I can't deliver to this PBX, I'm going to forward everything to this phone number. Um, so we also have uh, something called bursting I have not discussed. So um, you can you're ever wondering, well, I don't know. I don't know how many phone calls we need. Um, 
you know, anytime I have talked to trunks, uh, since I got into this industry 15 years ago, um, no one knows how many phone calls they're using, right? You know, you talk to an end user, the conversation usually starts with, well, we have eight lines, but there's like four of us here. Uh, usually because AT&T and Verizon always said in order to get service uh, on a business line, you had to have X number of trunks. Um, no phone systems easily report on this, if they even report on it at all. Um, so bursting is a great way for you to say, you know what? You've got 30 people, you don't have a call center. Seven sounds about right. If you go over seven, we'll be able to see it when we turn bursting on. Uh, and if you're going over seven a lot, then we know we need to adjust this up to eight or nine. Um, or if uh, we don't see any bursting, maybe we can take it down to five or six. Uh, and then we also do have built-in frog guard. Uh, so uh, the easiest way for us to do that is to limit uh, the amount you can spend on international calls to $10 a week. So uh, if you were to have some sort of uh, security thing happen and somebody did make international calls, um, you're not getting tens of thousands of dollars worth of billing from us. Uh, it's going to stop at 10. Uh, and if you do more than 10, dot, like if you need to do more in international phone calls uh, than ten, $10 per week, uh, you can set things up to do more. So if you've got a customer that uh, they do a lot of international calling, then we can set that limit higher. Um, so just going to talk a little bit about the uh, unique uh, architecture we have the substation and then we're going to go into uh, a little q a so a typical SIP provider which uh, means pretty much all of our competitors uh the way they set up their infrastructure is you've got a, a phone or a phone system it goes out over the internet it goes to that provider's infrastructure uh, which can be a choke point right and if they're not set up properly for things maybe they're getting uh, attacked um, then goes out over the internet and then goes out over uh, the PSTN or to the closest point of presence to deliver that phone call. Um, so a lot of times there's latency from having so many points uh, that need to be touched. Um, once it hits the provider infrastructure, they're using something called least cost routing. So uh, they're using devices that go, hey, this way over here, um, it's not necessarily going to be good quality, but it's the cheapest. And since we did this race to the bottom to save people a couple of bucks a month in order for us to be profitable, uh, we're going to take that least cost route and hopefully they get a decent enough sounding phone call. Uh, with SIPStation, uh, we've done it uh, completely differently. It goes from the customer device, PBX or phone, over the internet and closed and goes to the closest point of presence. And if you're not familiar with what a po point of presence is, um, think of in your city, your neighborhood, or your village, or your town, um, those old uh, 1930s looking buildings uh, that Verizon or AT&T or Quest or whoever was in, right? Uh, to service that neighborhood. And they're kind of hulking because they end up have those big old switches in them, and those things are still being used, right? Uh, the one a mile and a half from my house uh, for Verizon, uh, they've repurposed it. Um, it is still the closest point of presence uh, for my area, and uh, they just don't happen to have any PSTN or very limited PSTN infrastructure in there. Um, so instead of everything going through our infrastructure, which can create a choke point, which can lead to bad sounding quality calls, which can be um, left open to attacks that can uh, take our service down. It goes over the internet, that mile and a half to the Verizon building near me, goes through their infrastructure 
and Ghost of the Closest Verizon AT&T Quest building uh, to whoever I'm dialing to give them a phone call. So this reduces the number of hops. Uh, it keeps latency and jitter to a minimum, uh, and it never goes through um, equipment that uh, could be going through an upgrade or being attacked or anything else. Uh, so this allows us to give people uh, an amazing sounding call, which uh, I've worked here four years now, um, and I have never, and I've been in this industry for 15, and this is the first place I've worked where I never hear any call quality issues. I never hear complaints from partners like, hey, uh, we're getting X, Y, or Z. Uh, and that's because of the way our infrastructure is set up. Uh, and as you've seen from the pricing uh, point, we are not uh, obviously the cheapest, but we're not far off. So at this point, uh, we will start to wrap things up with some uh, Q&A. And uh, since uh, Tom has access to that, I will uh, ask him to uh, read those off to me. Well, yes, I do have access to that, Mr. Todd. And I have a question here for you. Uh, first question is, how can a Sangoma partner benefit from selling SIP station or fax station? Do we have a different price list? You do not have a different price list. Um, and the benefit is that you're uh, able to uh, start to get recurring revenue, right? So uh, when you sell this through uh, us and VoIP Supply, um, you'll get uh, spiffs when they're available. So right now it's that uh, five times MRR. Just bring that up. Uh, but then you'll also get uh, recurring revenue, right? So you sign them up for a three-year contract, you get that five times monthly uh, recurring revenue spiff, and then for the next three years on that customer, you're also getting a check monthly from VoIP Supply. Right, and uh, Jose, if uh, you're really, if you're interested in the partner program to uh, resell the San Gomez service, all of the percentages and everything for different tiers are listed out. Uh, right in our contract and uh, partner information and as well as an added bonus on top of the uh, monthly recurring check you would get uh, on that percentage we also offer uh, on any of the, if you're selling any hardware into those contracts that you sell if you have to buy additional hardware through VoIP supply for them we offer a percentage of rebate on that as well that you accrue here internally at VoIP supply so you kind of get a uh, you have a couple of uh, ways to make some additional cash. Okay, and I have one about fax station, Todd. They're asking about uh, what the reliability is like. Have you seen a lot of downtime? No. Um... The reliability on our end is uh, over five nines. Uh, the only time um, we've seen an issue and we're able, like if you open a ticket with our guys, 99% um, of the time if a, let's say a fax is failing that you were sending, um, I know the acronym is ECR, I think it's er error correction rate or something like that. Uh, it's usually that it is not turned on uh, at the receiving end and uh, on that fax machine uh, without ECR on, if there's a noise on the line, uh, it causes faxes to fail. But other than that, um, you know, since you can log into the fax station portal, um, everything is there. We store those faxes that are sent and received for up to a year. Uh, we default it to six months, but you can go um, as far down as one day or save it up to a year. Um, yeah, I'm just kind of quickly logging into uh, to mine real quick. So even if it goes to the fax machine, uh, depending on how you set things up, it can still be in here for you to access. 
um, or if you don't want to use a fax machine, uh, you can do it all from here. Great. Okay, let's see if we got anything else here. Are you still uh, trying to load that to show? Or? No, I'm just uh, okay. going through it. I mean, it's a pretty straightforward interface, right? Like you come in here, mm -hmm. inbox, outbox, send. Um, you know, if you get lots, lots of faxes, you can you can search through it. Okay, and I did have another question here, Todd, uh, just asking simply about what is the SLA for technical support should a customer have issues with their service? We do not, I don't believe we have an SLA on any of this. You just call in. Um, let's see here. Probably going to be under port. Station, fax station. Yeah, just uh, give us a call uh, and we'll begin to address right. it. Yep, yeah, same. Gives you yeah, your toll free and uh, local numbers there. Perfect. That was all the questions I had in here. Is there anybody else has any other questions? Speak now or forever hold your peace? All right. Well, I do want to thank you all for taking time out of your day uh, to join us here for the San Gomo webinar related to all of their uh, great services that they do offer from SwitchFox Cloud to SIP Station to Fax Station. If you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact myself or Todd. Uh, we're here all the time, uh, ready to uh, answer any questions you have. And I do want to thank Todd for taking the time out of his day to uh, get on here with us and uh, share his knowledge on these uh, product offerings. And with awesome. that, we will conclude the webinar, and I hope everybody has a fantastic rest of your day.